What's your family members got to do with my daughter on another man's lap? Right, that's First what I want to know. You ever want to feel good about yourself? Just turn on Paternity Court. We've talked about the show a few times already on the channel, and today I'm giving you all of the best of the men who forgot to wrap it up. Words truly cannot describe what we're getting into, so subscribe if you haven't already, and let's dive into it. Ms. Hummel, you claim you were caught in a love triangle with the defendant and his current girlfriend, which has left him denying he fathered your eight-month-old daughter, Lola. Only a few things more terrifying in this world than being in a courtroom with two women you slept with over the course of just a few months. Unfortunately, that's where David Pack found himself in this six-season episode of Paternity Court. Mr. Pack, you and your current girlfriend, Miss Fuentes, are 100% certain you are not Lola's biological father. If anyone needs a DNA test, he needs to get one for the other child. What other child? My child. She just had a child two months ago. Paige Hummel believes that Pack is the father of her eight-month-old daughter, Lola, while Pack denies the allegations. Meanwhile, Pack and his current girlfriend, Raven Fuentes, are currently in the midst of raising a two-month-old child of her own. You saying if he needs a DNA test, it's for that child? Yes. What's um, going on with that? She has been known to sleep around while in relationship. Paige has everyone here because she wants to prove David is the father of her child. She also calls into question the legitimacy of David and Raven's love child. There was an incident where me and him had gotten into argument and basically I kicked him out. I kicked him out for three days and during that three days I slept with my ex. So you slept with your ex during that time? Correct. Admittedly. Raven admits that roughly eight weeks before she found out she was pregnant, the two got into a fight and right after that fight she had unprotected sex with one of her exes. How can anyone with that haircut possibly be having sex that regularly? We hate to bring up the past, but since it's on record, yes. you've appeared in this court. I have. Before. Yep. Oh. yep. You've been in this courtroom. You pretty much admitted to the fact that you had had sex with Most several members of the same family. Yes. David needs to pick a better woman. Raven has been on paternity court before, and she has gone on record to say that she has previously had sex with several members of the same family. I hate to use this word, but this girl is definitely going through her hoe phase. She is a slut! Anyway, back to the matter at hand. Lola was born November 21st. So you say, if you count back, the week of conception would have been February 23rd through February 28th, which is smack dab in the middle of the time, you say you had no sex with her because you were broken up. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Correct. David claims that he couldn't possibly be the father of Paige's baby because the couple didn't have sex until April and Lola was born in November. Mr. Pat, you are the father. The test came back and David is the father. So unless his sperm possesses superpowers, then he lied about when he and Paige first became intimate. Mr. Jordan, you claim the defendant tricked you into signing her daughter's birth certificate and being a daddy. But two years later, you were told that another man is her biological logical father. Christopher Jordan believed that he was the father of Jessica Heim's child, but recent evidence made him believe his life was a lie. Ms. Heim, you admit to being unfaithful to Mr. Jordan, but say he is Caitlin's father. According to Chris, Jessica tricked him into signing paternity documents under false pretenses. Jessica, meanwhile, admits to having sex with another man. I only had sex with one man when we were together, and I had sex with him one time, and, but we've been messing around for seven years, just one time in April, and then I found out I was pregnant in June. Jessica claims she only had sex with one other man, and it was just the one time. This supposedly happened in April, and she became pregnant in June. What are you feeling? Hurt, because my daughter, she's old enough to realize she came and asked me, does my dad still love her? It never hurt me so bad. This obviously isn't a good look for her, and she immediately makes it worse for herself, bursting into tears and playing the victim, despite having no evidence to support the claim that she knows Chris is the father. Her and the family member get, gets into like an altercation or whatnot, so they started like throwing dirt on each other, you know what I mean? So the family member turned around and was like, well, why you ain't told Chris that? He's not Caitlyn's dad. But as she was saying it, she pulls out the phone, and she started showing me, I could pull it up, I ain't gotta lie. And as you can see right here, Yana, like, I, I mean, I don't, I don't like to say people look look alike, but I'm like, yo, 
it's, it's a lot of resemblance here. Jessica's deception continues when Chris reveals why he was even suspicious in the first place. Apparently, the two were in a heated argument that resulted in Jessica showing him photos of another man posing with Chris's alleged daughter, complete with an interesting caption. What was your point of having the baby have this relationship with Santavius that he's calling her his baby? All I said was that I was pregnant when I first found I was pregnant. I did not say it was his child. I feel like he assumed that it was his, but it's not his, it's Chris. It's clear this man, Centavius Knight, believes he's the father, and the only justification Jessica can come up with is that she uses the other man as an emergency babysitter. But boy, she's in for a surprise when Centavius takes the stand and completely destroys that testimony. Do you believe Caitlin is your daughter? Yes, that's my baby. She told me when she got pregnant, she's like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, what you telling me for? She's like, well, it's not Chris, because me and Chris been together a year and a half, and we ain't got pregnant. Soon you touch me, I get pregnant. Ultimately, it turns out that Chris is the father, but that revelation does not save Jessica's reputation. As long as her daughter has been alive, she has been actively manipulating two different men into thinking they're the father. That's not the type of woman you want to have a child with. Ms. Looper, you say you thought the defendant was a respectful, church-going family man who turned out to be anything but. You claim that after giving birth to your twins, Braley and Bishop, Mr. Downs denied fathering your babies. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Robinisha Looper thought that Cedric was a good, wholesome man until she had fraternal twins. And now he thinks they're not his. Mr. Downs, you say Ms. Looper carried on a secret relationship <clears throat> behind your back up until she found out she was pregnant and there is no way you are the father of her twins. This isn't a good look for Cedric but it doesn't take long for Robinisha's facade to fade. He went through my phone and I did have a lot of open doors. Open doors, so you still had other relationships that you had not we, quite cut off. Absolutely, this was two weeks after we started hanging out. So I did still have open relationships with other men while I was beginning a relationship with Mr. Downs. When describing the early parts of their relationship, Robinisha admits that she had open relationships with other men. Robinisha's defends herself by saying that she was in the process of breaking up those relationships, but it's very clear that this was a lie, and Judge Lake calls her out on it immediately. I was in the process of closing those doors. No, you don't close the door by saying, yeah, we can have sex. That's opening the door. How soon after Mr. Downs went through your phone did you find out you were pregnant? Two weeks later? We moved really fast. We, like, had a wedding date in two months. Ramanisha continues to dig a deeper hole for herself, as she said that she found out that she was pregnant two weeks after you went through her phone. She claims they were discussing marriage at this point, so they're serious enough for that, but they weren't serious enough for her to call off her open relationships. Uh, something doesn't add up here. Mr. Downs, you are not the father. The results show that he's not the father of either, and you can see that he's devastated. Ultimately, Cedric seems like a really good guy, and he deserves someone better. Just next time, make sure you pick up a few Trojans before you do the deed. Ms. Bronson, you have always known the defendant to be your biological father, but have opened your case against him to prove paternity because he now claims he has reason to deny he is your father. Most of these episodes are good for a laugh, but this one makes me genuinely genuinely angry. Your Honor, I feel Mr. Roberts is my father. He's the only father I've known for 29 years. That's my father. I had a phone conversation with my mother, then she mentioned Mr. Banks. And she said, don't you remember the guy that I told you who thought he was your father? Tracy Roberts raised Jasmine Bronson from birth, believing she was his biological daughter. Jasmine recently had a phone conversation with her mother, who claimed that Tracy wasn't her real father and that her actual father was a man named Michael Banks. I never knew anything about Mr. Banks. I also, you know, spent eight months in jail for unpaid child support, and I'm, I'm seventy-five thousand dollars in arrears. Now, neither Jasmine or Tracy knew that Michael Banks existed, and Tracy actually went to jail for unpaid child support. Like he served hard time for that child that might not even be his, and the mother just let that happen. Who does that? My thing is, the mother knew, or Mr. Banks knew, or somebody. Why did somebody say something? And if other people knew, they should have said something. We could have dealt with this issue 20 years ago. Tracy wants to be very clear that he will always love Jasmine. He's doing this because he wants to know why this didn't happen 20 years ago. Mr. Banks, I want to ask you, when did you 
become aware that you potentially could be Ms. Bronson's biological father. I could recall uh, when she was about six or seven, she had told me that Jasmine was my, uh, my daughter then. Michael's in the same boat here. However, the mother apparently never reached out to him after one visit in the park. Mr. Roberts, you are not the father. Still my daughter, I love you, you're always gonna be my daughter. It turns out that Tracy isn't the father, which means that he served eight months for nothing. He immediately hugs Jasmine after hearing the news, but I can't imagine how the mother is able to sleep at night knowing what she did to this man.